everyone. Can we all stand? I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God? Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there he may be also. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that he saw not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe Jesus died and rose again, even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of a saint. Let us pray. Let us just reverence God this morning. Our Father and eternal God, the maker of all things in heaven, in earth, and even beneath the earth, you are the giver of life. And you also are the one that will call us home. Father, today we exalt you. We lift you up today for who you are in our lives, God. We give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you all the glory. So God, today, we once more acknowledge you as our Lord and our Savior. We thank you for today, God. This day when we remember our falling brother. David, I think I remember hearing Chief Hazelwood. Father, we thank you 
for all that you have allowed him to do while on earth. We thank you, God, for the lives that he has touched. We thank you today, God, for the people that he has encouraged. And today, Father, as we remember, as we say farewell to a husband, a father, a brother, a servant, a, a policeman, a teacher. Father, we ask that in the name of Jesus, that those memories that he would leave or he has left with us, that God, you will allow all who are here today to build on those memories, to apply those memories to our lives so we too can be a better person in your sight, God. That they too, Father, will come to know you as Lord as a, and as Savior. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, you said you, you have given us the assurance. You're going to give us beauty for ashes. You're going to give us joy for mourning. And Father, today there are many who are mourning. There are many who are sad. We ask in the name of Jesus Christ that you're going to strengthen them. You're going to strengthen their inner man, Father. You're going to strengthen them physically, God. You're going to strengthen them spiritually, Father. So, Father, today as we say farewell, we ask that you're going to lead and you're going to direct that all things will be done to your honor and to your glory. And that God, you will take full control as you direct each and every one that is gathered here today. Father, we thank you once more. In Jesus' name we pray thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. We know that death is never, it's never easy. Especially for those who, who are close to the one who is deceased. And we are here today to pay our last respect to David, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Hazelwood, AKA Chief. But we are also here to celebrate his life. Though some will say short. But a life that is decorated and will be remembered for the many services that he has rendered to the people of this nation and beyond. A wonderful teacher, some will say. A wonderful law enforcement officer. But most of all, a pleasant, a pleasant person. A wonderful husband. Awesome father. A brother. A friend. So on behalf of the family, I want to say thank you. For your presence, for your support. As we do this last detail of his life here on earth. As Christians, we believe that death is not the end, but is a transition. And those who died with Christ will be with him. Equally so, those who died without Christ will live in eternal damnation. But we thank God for giving us such a wonderful person. We will miss him daily. But his memories will live on in the lives that he has touched. 
We live on in the wife, Kathleen Hazelwood. His children, Afiba, Afisha, Andre, Anil, and Arisha. All his siblings and his many friends. So to God be the glory. To God be the praise. In Jesus' name. We're going to have our first scripture reading to be done by his daughter, Miss Arisha Hazelwood, taken from the book of St. John, chapter 14. Reading from verse 1 to 6. St. John, chapter 14. Reading from verse 1 to 6. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If all not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. And where I am, there ye may be also. And whether I go, ye know, and do it, ye know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto, unto the Father but by me. Hallelujah. We have few changes to our order of service. I know it's a very hot day, so I want us to flow so that we can get going and get you out of this hot sun. Instead of the song, It Is Well, we're going to invite Mr. Gary Jacobs, who's going to do a special song. You may have your seat for those who can find one. You may have your seat as we invite Mr. Gary Jacob to do a special song. Thank you. Okay, on the behalf of our the Green Hill pastor, members of the Green Hill Evangelical Church, we extend our deeper sympathy to the extension of the Hazelwood family. Pray that God will give us, give you the strength to overcome this time of bereavement. Okay, this is a song requested by the modern law, so I'm going to try and do it for her this afternoon, this morning. Face to face with Christ my Savior, face to face what will it be, when with rapture I behold him, Jesus Christ, who died for me. Face shall I behold him far beyond the starry sky face to face and all is glory I shall see him by and by fainted now I see him with the dark red veil between but a blessed day is coming when his glory shall be seen face to face shall I Behold him far beyond the starry sky, face to face in all his glory. I 
shall see him by and by. Face to face, oh blissful moment. Face to face, to see and know. Face to face with my Redeemer, Jesus Christ, who loved me so. Face to face shall I behold Him far beyond the starry sky. Face to face and all is glory, I shall see him by and by. Yeah, face to face shall I behold him far beyond the starry sky. face to face a promise that he has given to all his saints we're going to flow with the tributes apart from Mr. Bill King of the Musty Company, our Commissioner of Police, Mr. Colin John. We're going to flow with the order, Daniel Hazelwood, his brother, Mr. Michael Charles, past Commissioner of Police. On behalf of Steen Hazelwood, Ms. Monique Yami, nephew. Denzel France, friend Old Rodney. So we're going to flow with the tributes and then the eulogy to be read by Mr. Elvis Charles. So we are going in the order of Mr. Bill King of Mustique, followed by Commissioner of Police Colin John, and the rest that is on the program will remain in that order. So let us invite Mr. Bill King, and then we flow in that order. Yes. Yes, good morning all. Good morning. To Miss Hazelwood and family, we were saddened to hear of the passing of David. And we want to express our most sincere sympathies to you and the family during this difficult time. From the security department and the management team of the Mustik Company Limited. David was a highly valuable and respected member of our team. And the, and the effects of his passing are already being felt in Mustique by all. David, also known by us as Quarter, was a dedicated employee who understood the meaning of the word team. He made many great contributions to the security department as a security supervisor and the building department as the quartermaster and help each division move forward in numerous ways. His work here will not soon be forgotten. David was a remarkable man and everything, sorry, and everyone he worked with is better from having known him. 
for those of us that had the privilege of calling him friend outside of work. We were humbled by his kindness and compassion to everyone around him. We will greatly miss and sorry, he will greatly be missed by everyone here and we are certainly so saddened by his death. Sis, know that our thoughts and prayers are with you and your family and friends during this difficult time. Death has taken away a genuinely warm individual, more importantly, a loving husband and father, and deprive so many others, including us all, of a very dear friend. Please, sis, accept our sincere condolences from the Musty Company Limited and one of his most favorite co-worker, Milkash, who could not be here today. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Just want to acknowledge the pastor and members of this church. Thanks for giving me the opportunity to say a few words. On behalf of the members of the Royal St. Vincent and Grenadines Police Force, the Ministry of National Security, specifically the Prime Minister of St. Vincent and Grenadines, I spoke to him this morning and he asked me to express his regrets for not being here today. But he has some equally important activities that he has to attend to and hence he cannot be here today. Also on my own behalf, I just wish to express my condolences to the immediate and extended family of former Inspector of Police, Mr. David Hazelwood. Inspector Hazelwood joined the Royal St. Vincent and the Grandin's Police Force on the 15th of October 1980. He retired from this noble organization on the 19th of February 2011. We have given service 30 plus years in the organization. I just want to say thanks to his family for the sacrifice that they made in allowing him to serve the Royal St. Vincent and the Police Force and the people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines by extension. He worked at the Special Services Unit, the Drug Squad, Central Police Station, Kittel's Police Station, Vormont Police Station, Kanawan Police Station, and the Mustique Police Station. I worked with him as a junior to of those places. I worked with him at the Drug Squad, and when I was in Canada as an immigration officer, he was the person who was in charge of the Canada police station. He was an inspector at that time. Inspector Hazelwood was both feared and fearless. He was feared by criminals. He was also feared by insubordinate subordinates. So, we had a scene at the drug squad. When, 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 right on you. You can't get away. Did you crook us? So, when any junior person um, committed any breach of the disciplinary regulation and Inspector Hazelwood wrote a report on you, you know you were already convicted at Audley Room. He was also fearless at the drug squad I performed several duties with him at Rose Place, Paul's Avenue, Harbour Club, Rose Hall, South Rivers. And I had no apprehension going out on duty with Inspector Hazelwood because I knew I was well protected and my back was covered. We also played football for the Royal St. Vincent and Grenadines Police Force on the same team. 
So he was a well-rounded individual. He has given human service to the people of St. Vincent and the Grandins yeah. and to the Royal St. Vincent and the Grandins Police Force. And for that, I just want to ask Commissioner Police say thanks to the family and wish you strength in your bereavement and I wish that his soul rest in perpetual peace. Thank you. Pleasant good afternoon to everyone. I would like to recognize not everybody can can't call everybody's name, but I would like to recognize the, the Honorable Sabota Caesar in our presence, the Honorable Sinclair Leacock, Commissioner of Police Colin John. Ex Commissioner of Police Michael Charles, Commissioner, the, the Commandant of the St. Vincent and Grandin's College Force, Sir Bortil Hamilton, the former Commandant Sir Dwight Lewis, Mr. Wayne Trimingham, who is the GP at the Musty Company, ex Acting Commissioner of Police, Mr. Richard Brown, um, all, all past police officers, ranks, higher ranks and junior ranks, my brother, Timothy Hazelwood, who is the superintendent of the, of the, of the prisons, the Hazelwood and Haywood family and all his relatives and friends but those names that I, do, I did not call is because you can't call all the names otherwise that we are dealing with time i want to send sympathy and condolences from such persons who have called in my ex-wife deborah alexander my daughter Maria in the United States also. My daughter Madonna who is here. My, my son Daniel Jr. who is, who is, who is in um, Grenada. My present wife. So you know I have, I have more than one wife. I'm blessed. Just like Solomon. Nadia and my other two daughters. Nadina and Faith and also Natasha and her family that is presently here. So I have six children, so I'm blessed also. The Martindale family in the USA and Canada and in St. Vincent. My, my, my brothers and sisters that came from, me from the UK, Canada and Trinidad, Danny, Dexter, Rosita and Alana. Thank God they made it here and all who send their text messages and all the greetings. My tribute to my brother, David Isaiah Jeremiah Hazelwood Haywood. Because a lot of people have known us by Haywood. Until when we get to the police force, then we have to change our surname because my father did not marry my mother. As you, you would have already know, Dave, Dave, well, David, David had born, had born on the 3rd of February, 1960, so he is 16 months older than me, and about almost a year older than Timothy. David was the oldest of my mother and my father, but he was the second oldest for my mother, and Danny was the oldest. His name... When he was small, they called him Jumbi. Shit in eye. That means uh, because he had a defective eye on the left side, they will call him um, 
Jumbi that he can't see like Jumbi shit in his eye. We have our names like Turtle and so forth. So, so um, my brother, he was an excellent sportsman. He plays. What is me? He plays football, cricket, pool, tennis, cards, dominoes. With all his friends, police, everybody that 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 he can get a chance to um to play with. In our younger days, he, we play with the with the girls, hopscotch, jacks. We tell stories. We play pan a pan, skipping, netball, etc. With the girls in our in our community. If you want somebody to in the cricket team to come and score some fast runs to you, or uh, somebody to, 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 to beat off the runs, just check David. Send him in early, and your team will be good. My brother, educational background, he had a higher educational background than all of his brothers and sisters, because most of us used to burn school, while he's in school, so, he went to Rich Miller Government, all of us went to Rich Miller Government School, where he obtained his school, his school even certificate. Then he fought his education in teaching, and somebody was already mentioned that he was a teacher at Lodge Village School. And he teach. God bless. Good teacher. After a couple of years, he joined St. Vincent. And he got in police force, as the commission says, in 1980 at Trinity School. And he, he, have, he have won most of the awards. He was the best recruit, the most outstanding recruit, and he got the commission about him. He, he played, um, we played cricket and football, myself, David, and, and Timothy. We, we played for, for the uh, Edinburgh sports team. We played football since 1983 when I joined the police force. We played football from that time until almost um, 2000. He climbed the ranks to inspector, and during his career, he worked very, very, very hard. We worked, we worked together at Southern Mission, and he have shown his, his, his ability. That's why he had, he had reached an inspector. He was a prosecutor for a long period of time in the, in the police force. And when he came up against these top lawyers like Arthur Williams and Prime Minister Ralph Gonzalez and them, you know how tough he had to be with these guys. So he was the most intelligent trial that my, my mother ever had. Then he retired from the, from the police force. He worked at Mustique Company for maybe over 12 years. 12 years and every time every time he comes up to Green Hill he lives right on, on the on the hill there. Sometimes when my sister Rosita came come from Trinidad, he will he will come up and we'll play cards, we will play domino with Timothy at Timothy home and, 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 and at his home. My brother was a very hard working person. Even from the police force to Mustique, when he finished working, he is going to come and he's going to go in the mountains along with his wife. He do extra work, he walk, he walk, he walk, he walk. He never had much rest in his life. He had a couple illnesses where he got two hornias. After that, after, after that, I think he was, he, he was diabetic. Then he had the COVID. Then he suffered from a foot injury, which sometimes I have to go and pick him up from down the wharf and bring him up, uh, take him to the doctor sometimes, when his wife and him can't make it. He was a great father, father figure to his children. He prepared a bright future and security measures for his for his family before he died. He, ha he had a strong 
He, he was a strong, hard working and a loving father. And he had a wonderful, strong, loving, and hard working wife. That woman can walk, I admire her. He was a father figure to my children, my first three children. If they can't get you to me, they reach in Green Hill by David. And then David is going to come over by me. And we will, and we will, and we will trash it out before I make my, uh, my final decision. But he was the favorite uncle. He was the favorite uncle for them. Which is Madonna, which is Madonna, Maria and, and, and Daniel. David had left, he had left a legacy in St. Louis and the Grandinese that all of us should recognize and, and cherish the moment that he, that he spent with, with, with us. I took a picture a, a part out of his life, lifestyle. Man, work hard for what you want to achieve in life. He was a, he, he was a, a straightforward brother and a father and a friend and, and no bars hold with him. He had a good life. We had a good life with him, all his, his brothers and sisters at, at certain point. He also used to check up on me to make sure that I'm okay because right now I'm just like a lone ranger. He lived a good family life and we just want to thank God for what he has done for him when he was here on planet Earth. So my dear brother, my loving brother, we will miss you. We love you. May the soul rest in peace. And my brother, I salute you. Okay. And thank God for all you have, you have done for you. And you have left your legacy. Rest yeah. in peace, my brother. Farewell. God bless. I'd also like to acknowledge the presence of the Honorable Sabato Cecilio, Area Representative, the Honorable St. Clair Leacock, Commissioner of Police, Superintendent of Prison, Commandant of the, the Cadets, Fort Pass Commandant, Retired police officers, present police officers, family, friends, well wishes. Pleasant good morning. David and I went back a long way. Winston Chief Davis and David Hazelwood had the persons who encouraged me to join the Royal St. Vincent and Grenadine Police Force. And when I joined the police force, we walked together along with the commissioner and his brother, Steen, at the drug squad. And I've learned a lot from David. As a matter of fact, it was David who inspired me. And I owe him a debt of gratitude. And 
20th of August, we were together at spring. And we, Elvis Charles, Edmund Peters, myself, we chatted. Little did I know that that would be the last that I would have um, spoken to David. But um, on behalf of the Greenest Sports and Culture Club, and on my family's behalf, I'd just like to attempt to do this song. The old house you are living in needed repair. The windows and the shutters were letting in cold, cold air. You said to Cece, you're going to fix it. When you can find the time But all you have been lately Was leaving on your mind Lately all he had Was leaving on his mind Yes, Lord Seems like you you are thinking of most of the time soon and very soon you leave this troubled world behind lately David had leaving leaving on his mind so I guess he went look for a better place to live. Cause he couldn't seem to get excited about this world and what it can give. Even though he could buy it all with a solitary time. But what good will this world do him with leaving on his mind? Lately, David, he had leaving on his mind. Oh, gosh. It seems that all he was thinking about most of the time soon and very soon he leave this trouble all behind lately david had leaving leaving on his mind so lately david had leaving on his mind it seems that all he was thinking about most of the time and soon and very soon he leaves his family all behind lately david had leaving Lately, David had leaving. Lately, he had leaving. Leaving all his mind. May so rest in peace. Good afternoon, everyone. 
This song has been requested from my uncle Steve. I pray the words of this song will continue to be a stronghold as you face in this time. If you give a little more than you take If you try to fix more than you break You're the kind who takes the time To lead a stranger in the rain There's a place for people like you if you stand up for those down on your knees and lend a voice to those who cannot speak if you shine a little light give sight to the one who've lost their way there's a place for people like you I've heard of there's a street made of gold And when you get there, there's a hand to hold I believe when your days down here are true There's a place for people like you if you walk around with your heart on your sleeve And if you try to be the change you want to see If you lay down your life for love so someone could be saved There's a place for people like you
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, I don't think that things happen by chance because the same song I'm supposed to sing now just played a while ago. But what I can say, God has been a good God. In spite of the situation that the family is going through, He still remains to be a faithful God. And I just want to ask you to continue to put your trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not onto your own understanding. Bless the Lord. I love you, Lord. Hallelujah. For your mercy never fails me All my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I would sing of the goodness of God I want to sing that again. I love you, Lord. For your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am in. I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in darkest night. You are still out. I know you as a father. I know you as a friend, and I have lived in the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful, and all my life you have been so, so good, with every breath. sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in darkest night. You are close like no other. I know you have a father. I know you as a friend, I have lived in the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful, and all my life you have been so, so sing of the goodness of God. Your goodness is running up, is running up to me. Your goodness is running after, is running after me. When my life laid down, I surrender all, I give you everything. 
Your goodness is riding after, is riding after me. All my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. Thank you. Before we go to the eulogy, we're going to take one more special requested song. So we're going to invite one that was requested by the brother and the young lady oblige. So we're going to do one more song just before Mr. Elvis Charles come and do the eulogy. Bless the Lord. This afternoon, I extend condolences to the extended family of which I'm a part of. It's a hard task to bury a loved one, but take comfort in knowing that he's resting in the arms of the Lord. I'm gonna attempt to sing this song, but one thing I know I'm not gonna sing this song by myself. I was asked to sing this song and I'm being obedient. I was asked to do a special and being obedient. Roxanne, I'm gonna sing. Bless the Lord, Danny, I'm gonna sing. Bless the Lord. But I need you to join with me because I'm not a recording artist. I just try to bless the Lord with my voice that he loaned to me. Hallelujah. Hide me now under your wings. Within your mighty hands When the ocean rise and thunders roll I will soar with you above the storm Father, you are king over the flood I will be still, know you are God. I will be still, know you are God. Auntie City, find rest my soul. In Christ alone. No his powers in quietness and trust. And when the ocean rise and turn the roads, I will sow with you above the storm. Father, you are king over the flood. I will be still, know you are God. I will be still, know you. Join with me today. And when the ocean rise and turn the roads, I will sow with you above the storm. Father, you are king over the flood. I will be still, know you. You got to be still. I will be still, know you. Somebody said it better be still and know. I will be still and know you, our God. Hallelujah.
Master, I beg your permission to adopt the protocol that was established by former speakers in the interest of time. And Danny, I also seek your permission to omit your part of the eulogy as you are very extended. And I think everyone has gotten the whole message from your tribute. This eulogy was composed by the members of the deceased family. I've had my fair share of laughter. I cried. And I really hope that it would clearly describe for you the life of this dear friend who lies lifeless in the casket. David Hazelwood, alias Chief, was born on February 3rd, 1960, to the deceased Jeremiah Haywood and Irene Hazelwood. He was the third bird for his father and his father's first son. David has left behind his wife, Kathleen, five children, seven grandchildren, five brothers and four sisters. In his early childhood, he attended the Richmond Hill Government School. After completing his studies, he then became a teacher. David later decided he no longer wanted to teach, according to his sister Rosita. He decided to become a police officer. She said, we lied to our father and told him David failed his teaching exam. So he had to leave teaching. He left teaching and went to the quarry to pound stone, then joined the police force. David dedicated his life and service to the government and people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines for over 30 years. He was enlisted on October 10, 1980 and retired February 19, 2011. During his time within the organization, he was posted at various stations and departments, which included the Special Services Unit, Immigration, Narcotics, Central Police Station, the Kittels Police Station, Spring Village, Leyu, Barrelly, Vermont, Canawan, and the Mustique Police Station. According to his sister, Rosita, David was my loving brother, who would call me every day and speak for hours. I would say, David, I'll call you later. And if I take too long, he would call back. He called it Thursday before he died, telling me and my husband of his plans after retirement. One plan was for us to come to St. Vincent and spend time with him. When he damaged his foot, he called saying, Oh, Lord Zeta, this foot, help me cry now. And I would start crying with him. I encourage him to get up and walk even if it's around the house. He would say, or he said, I'm not a security. What do you want me to walk around the house for? In another call, he would say, Zita, you must pray for me here. He spoke of his wife and children often and always praised that he really had a good wife. He would call every day for us to watch cricket. Zita girl, cricket at two o'clock. Where are they? Get ready for us to watch the game. And that day, we spoke until my phone died. I will miss my brother, especially hearing his voice. May his soul rest in peace. Stinson Hazelwood, brother. David was my protector from school. I used to look for plenty fights, and David was there to back me. So no one could beat me once David was around. Worthless God. We all grew up together. Eight of us slept on the same bed. He was a special brother. David started playing football, cricket, and athletics. I followed along. He left teaching and joined the police force. I followed along. He started elevating himself in the force. I followed along. When he left school and started teaching, I didn't follow. 
David was my guide when I was in the force. If I had to write a statement in my early years, David would vet it. If I'm going wrong, he would make it right. He was always there even when he left the force. He was still my guide. My brother is irreplaceable. I fellowship with him, played cards together. And he won all the games even though I was angry. I never showed it. My brother was the kind of person you couldn't say anything bad about. When he was playing softball cricket, if any batsman on the team to hit 10 sixes, it's David. And that's true. I played with him and I heard him say, even though he hit it very far, boy, that he never even catching him meat. I don't know how he used to do it, although he had cross eyes. <laughs> he used to see and hit the balls. No bowler used to bowl with him because David was an excellent cricketer. Could have bowled and he could have bat. I recall times when our father used to come to Victoria Park and Grammar School Park to watch David and Daniel play cricket. David could bowl so good. He first, his first ball, he bowled was a fever. <laughs> Second ball was the twins. That was the fastest ball ever. Then he bowled Andre and Afisha. Then he started bowling slower. Then came Anil and Arisha. David was a very positive father. He was loved by everyone and helped everyone. When he was in the police force and you get in trouble, he always used to get you out. He always believed in being his brother's keeper. He always aimed for first and was the most outstanding in everything he did. He played Pan, a brilliant pool player. In one of our last conversations, he said to me, it doesn't matter if you have this or that. If you don't have Christ, it's a waste. When he said that to me, the first thing I said to myself was that his wife did a good job. All the years she kneeled down and prayed, and he still wanted to throw her outside. <laughs> he had no choice but to accept his salvation. When I saw him on the bed that Sunday, I saw peace. I saw peace even at the funeral home. I saw he was at peace. The only thing that hurts, he didn't say goodbye. Alana Douglas Douglin, his sister. I remember David for his sense of humor, his straightforwardness, and always remember that he was very provoking and loved to rough play. I am proud to have had him as a brother. His love that he showed us, we had an we had an, a togetherness and a lot to talk about. One thing we have is open history. I remember every time David came from football practice, he would remove his stinky socks. And to this day, I can still remember the scent. <laughs> I love his special personality and the extra mile he took for people, which I see in all of us. And he always plays family first. We really had fun times together. He was always the straightest. Another memory I had was a concert we had and David dressed in black as shadow and sung Baseman from Hell. He sang and stood up as a real shadow and his performance was surprising. He was a loving husband, a father, and I'm proud of his achievements. And I would always speak highly of him. We really had good times together, and I have enough history of us to sustain me for a lifetime. I will miss him in the flesh, but will always keep him in my heart. Gone, but never be forgotten. Dexter Hazel with his brother. David was such a good man and a very straightforward person. He had something to tell you, he would tell you. On the other hand, if he needs to help you in any form, he would help you. He was a very loving and honest man. If he didn't like you, he would let you know he doesn't like you. But if he had to or need to do something for you, he will. That was how gentle he was. 
David was my family king, and there is no replacement for him. He is our family king. Afisha Hazelwood Phillips, his daughter. Words can't express the way I feel about my father. He was my first love. The one I would run to with everything. He would advise me, discipline me, and counsel me. I was his spoiled child. While growing up once, daddy was on a weekend at home. And he, would, and he took Andre, Gregor, mommy, and myself to the beach. Or for drives. I remembered while living in Tortola, and my mom called. She said, Fisha, something happened to your father. Before she could have said what it was, I was on the floor bawling. She said, but girl, you can't even wait to let me tell you what happened. You start to cry. She said, see, I tell you that everything for you is a father. I said, ma, what happened to my daddy? Apparently, they arrested a man. And daddy was playing with his gun and shoot off his finger. My dad loved his family. He was always present at every graduation. He worked hard to provide for us. He always had me type in his work. When I complained, he would say, what do you think I send you to school for? He wasn't only our dad, but a father to everyone he came in contact with. I remember the smile on his face at my wedding. I know he was extremely happy. I will also always remember how much he loved us. Sleep in peace, my favorite guy. I have now gained my personal angel. Love you forever, daddy. Deborah, Alexander, ex sister -in -law. David had a big heart. One big enough open to everyone. He was the uncle of all uncles. I felt the pain when I received calls from my three children that they lost their uncle. It was the most painful day to hear their pain. David, you were a magnificent brother-in-law. Sleep well, and you will be missed, but never forgotten. Madonna Hazel with his niece. Uncle David was my favorite uncle, and my weekend getaway from my parents as a child growing up. He always made us laugh and had fun with us. His home was always open to my siblings and I. Whenever, no matter the time of day. If we were unhappy, where we stayed while my mother was in the U.S., we would tell Auntie Sissy. And he would tell Auntie Sissy, go get us. As I got older and moved to the U.S., my son Tyler was a frequent flyer during his summer vacation and stayed with his Auntie Sissy and Uncle David. In 2016, I decided to get married, knowing my parents didn't agree. I asked him to walk me down the aisle, and without being questioned, lectured, or judged, he gave me away with honor. He supported me 100% and didn't care about my parents' feelings and input. He showed up and showed out. He was an easy person to talk to and made a joke of every situation. He was my second father, and I enjoyed every moment with him throughout the years. I love you, Uncle. Thank you, and sleep in peace. Tyler Hazelwood, great nephew. In a short way, he said Uncle David was a very chilled, loving heart, warm and sort of strict. I will always love him and keep him close to my heart. Thank you for welcoming me to your home and into your life. Love you, and rest in peace. Ziva Hazelwood. Great niece, even though I didn't get to meet you, I knew you were important to my mommy. I felt sad when I saw her crying. I know you are with God and hope you are looking over us. Love you, uncle. Maria Hazelwood, niece. My childhood was, a, was wonderful with him. He used to tickle me uncontrollably until I vomited. He took me in his as his own and took care of me. Once he made Sunday lunch and fed us after church and shared Madonna Jr. and my plate. He stood in the doorway and watched us killing the food. Midway he asked us, so how is it? We say it was very good. Then he asked us if he knew, if we knew 
what we were eating. And we said, Mr. Chicken? He said, no. And he said it was the rabbit we were feeding in the pen. <laughs> Madonna and I started to cry. And, and he just stood there laughing. He was my second dad and the greatest uncle I ever had. Love you. Rest in peace. Daniel Jr., as I close, Uncle David, I want to thank you always for being the person I can lean on when I was in all kind of trouble. Thank you for always making your home my home. My son and myself said, sleep in peace. Thank you very much. We'll now have a special song from Miss Sandrine Bristol on behalf of his daughter Afisha Hazelwood. And we will follow that with a second reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, reading from verse 50 to 58 by Mr. Anil Hazelwood.
to me. Now with this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot be in heart. In, excuse me. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither do it corruption inherit in corruption. Behold, I show, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and de the dead shall be risen incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible, corruptible must put on incorrup incorruption, and this mortal shall put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall put on incorruption, and this mortal have put on immortality, they shall be brought to pass. The saying that is written, death is swallowed up in the victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the Lord. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abound in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain. Hallelujah. We are quickly coming to the conclusion. And I want to thank all those who would have made a tribute to the chief. He was such a wonderful person. I've known him for the past 20 odd years and I've never seen him even though he was a police officer in any strict way. He was always gentle, always very courteous and manly. Never said a bad word. I remember times when I would visit their home to take their nine-seater van so that we can go to the beach or somewhere about I will leave my my Toyota Starlet very small car in his care and our and our return we would have met Uncle David and, and Tante Sissy coming from somewhere and myself and my wife will always said boy he liked this car more than anything else for every time we park it in his garage he and Tante Sissy take the time out to go on a line. That stood out. I want to leave you with a few words. Very brief. And sometimes when you prepare something, you want to start from the beginning and go to the end. But I, I want to go from the end to the beginning. We thank our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for strength, for courage, for wisdom. And we experience his goodness even now, even you did not notice. In the first hour, it was very hot, steaming. But he gave us the cloud by day. To shelter us. And indeed, sometimes we, we do not recognize his goodness in the small things. But I felt the heat just like everyone did. But it is so cool. It is the goodness of God in our lives, even in this simple matter. And why not just give God some praise? Why not just give him a round of applause for sending the, the clouds? It did not bring rain, but it brought shelter. 
such an awesome God we serve. And we are thankful and we are grateful. Father, we love you. Your goodness is running after us. Your goodness is running after us. And even in this little moment, we do not cease to say thank you, Lord. There is no sweat on us even now. But we enjoy the coolness. He said in the coolness of day, he came down and he fellowship. That's the word. He fellowship with Adam and Eve. I don't know if you feel it now, but I could feel his fellowship among us. Wherever he is, there is always a coolness. And there is always a quietness. And we are forever grateful. The words of the passing brother to us. As he conversed with Steen, he looked around all that he that he has. He looked around his home. And he saw the blessings of the Lord upon his life. And he asked the question, what is it? What is the worth of all that I have? What is the worth of all that one possess? If you do not have Jesus in your life, what is the worth? What profit there is if you gain the whole world and you lose your soul? The man realized that a life without Jesus brings no profit at all. It is a life worthless, a life useless. A life where there is no reward. None at all. And even as I ponder on that, the word suddenly is a word that we sometimes forget. Or we do not pay much, much attention to it. But it speaks of swiftness. It speaks of how something change drastically quickly unexpectedly before our eyes it says that you're here today and you're gone tomorrow suddenly you are here and all of a sudden you are no more What is your life? The question can be asked. It is even as a vapor that appeared for a little while, for a little time, and then it vanished away. Such is the case of David, Isaiah, Jeremiah. And it will be forever in our memories that ours leading to him closing his eyes he would have been a proud father in giving his wife his his dear daughter Aphesia in marriage then mere hours later he crossed that thin line that separates life from death a state that our Lord Jesus calls going to sleep. But even in the suddenness, the Bible says, I won't have you to be ignorant concerning those who are asleep. Why? Because suddenly brings hope. Hope has a name. There is hope beyond going to sleep because even as you imagine when you fall asleep there's a hope of waking up 
there's a hope that you would open your eyes. But I'm here to say that the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall open their eyes first. Just as suddenly a person goes to sleep, there's a suddenly that the same person will wake up. The return of our Lord Jesus will be a sudden time. Matthew 24, 36 tells us, For we know not what hour or day that the Lord cometh. And the message to those of us who are still yet awake, who are not asleep, is to watch. To watch means that we keep guard. That we prepare ourselves. The Lord has gone to prepare a place for us. And he is coming again. His return is imminent. And his return is is also sudden. One of the ways we prepare ourselves is by believing. Believing that this blessed hope is found only in Jesus. That we acknowledge that we are in need of a savior. That the breath in our lungs, the very air that we breathe, belongs to him. Some of us live very carelessly. As though we are saying, God, I do not need your breath. I can make it on my own. Such is an error. Our breath belongs to him. The very air that we breathe is his. That we can be here today and gone tomorrow. That we live in time and that there's a time for everything. The wise man Solomon said there is a time and a purpose for everything under the heaven, under the sun. That there is a time to be born and there is a time to die. That time waits on no one. That things have a way of happening suddenly. That this flesh is corruptible. And to be with Jesus, we have to put on incorruptible. The hope of eternal life is for those who chose Jesus. Who acknowledge that they cannot breathe on their own. Who acknowledge that they are in need of a savior. The one who gives life and who gives it in abundance for those who chose otherwise there is no hope there is no hope for those who will choose to live otherwise and if there is a passing word from our dear brother he will say choose Jesus he will say, choose life. He will say, do not look on the things that you have accomplished throughout your lifetime. They are vanity. You cannot take them with you. Beyond the grave, there is unknown happening. We are not sure what is beyond there. But we thank Jesus. We thank God the Father for sending Jesus. As the book of Hebrews declared that he went and he experienced this same thing that is called death. He went into the grave. He took the keys of death. He is the light of the world. And in that dark place that is called death, Jesus has illuminated it. 
It is no longer unknown to those who choose to follow after Jesus. It is no longer a place that we dread. Knowing that beyond there we're going to be with Jesus. That we're going to meet him. That he will be there waiting to welcome us home. To life. And to life everlasting. Today, if he can speak to us. Knowing that he has been there. He would say, choose life. Do not be afraid. Be of good courage. For the Lord himself has gone to prepare a place. And he's coming again. Are you ready? It is going to be suddenly. It could be very well today. It could be in the next minute. Are you ready? Are you ready to be with Jesus? But the only way that is guaranteed that you will be with Jesus, you have to receive him. You have to receive him as your Lord and Savior. For he is the only way. He is the truth. And he is the giver of life. Father, may your ancient words that is ever true bring change in your people today. In Jesus' name, Amen and Amen and Amen. At this time, I'm, I'm going to ask all the family, if you're not already standing, if you, if you, can, if you may, you may come right here and I'm going to invite this wonderful woman of God who has become the family chapel. She has been at weddings. She has been at funerals. She's always with them. So even now I'm going to invite as the family come Sister Mrs. Silnet Jack to pray for the family. Hallelujah. 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 As the family comes, just gather in front. Now, life is so fragile. Yes. Yeah. And it is so important that we, people, consider how they are living and turn their lives to Jesus Christ. Just two weeks ago, yesterday, I celebrated with this family. Yeah. And what a grand time it was. Yeah. Just before the ceremony, when the deceased came, he saw me. Now we have not seen for years. Because he doesn't walk in St. Mary's and be with the COVID and everything. We had not seen each other for years, yeah. but we are close family friends. And uh, he came and we start facing each other, you know, the facing and slapping hands together. And then he came and he hugged me and he really hugged me and saying, you know, giving greetings. After the ceremony, they went to take out photographs and I didn't go to take out any. But when I went around somewhere, walked somewhere, looking for his wife, he came again and the same thing, and he hugged me. Little did I know he was saying something that he himself didn't no. even know. And as I said, it was such a grand occasion. Yeah. And that is what, how I want the family to remember. Grand occasions. Yes, you have to mourn. Yeah. Yes, you have to weep. And when, if you have to cry, cry. By all means, cry. But remember the good times you had with David, his word. Yeah. I wish on behalf of my husband, Reverend Conroy Jack, to ex and our children and their families,
to extend condolences to the Hazelwood family and for the extended family as well. Now, I'm going to pray for the family. Divine and eternal Father, you are great and you are greatly to be praised. You are compassionate, O oh God. You are loving and you are kind. And regardless of what has happened, it is your way of doing what pleases you. I want to thank you for the life of David Hazel. I thank you, God, for allowing us to meet so many years ago and for the, the good times we would have had together. I pray for the family of God. I thank you for them. I pray, oh God, that they would remember the good times they would have had together as a family. It is often said that parent gone and family done. Let it not be said with this family. I pray, oh God, that they would see each other as family, as one, that there would, would be this closeness, that they would be closer drawn to you. And so in the name of Jesus, I pray for his wife, Kathleen. I pray for his five children, his grandchildren. I pray, oh God, that you would knit them together. I pray, oh God, that they would find source of strength among each other and in you. Because without you, they can do nothing. So, Father, I commit this family before you. Here's the word, hey word. Brothers, sisters, wife, father, grandfather, friend. I pray, God, that your blessing will be upon this family. And that the immediate family will get the support necessary for them to carry on. So, oh God, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you for his life. I thank you for his family. And I pray that the blessing of God Almighty will continue to be on them and with them and be demonstrated through them. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless you. Amen. God bless you. We have now come to the conclusion of this segment. We're going to make our journey down to the Kingston Cemetery. I would ask that we allow the family to so go ahead and then we can follow thereafter. As we do this closing song, it is well. It is well with my soul. When peace like a river attended my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, that was taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul.
No man died to himself. For so whether we live, we live unto the Lord. And whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live thereof or die, we are the Lord's. For to this end Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be Lord both of the dead and the living. For me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet, what shall I choose, I want not. For I am in a strait betwixt two, having a desire to depart, and to be with Christ, which is far better. For he knoweth our frame, he remembereth that we are dust. As for man, his days are as grass, as a flower of the field, so he flourishes. For the wind passes over it, and it, and it is gone, and the place thereof shall know it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that fear him, and his righteousness unto his children. Children. Madonna, 
the Lord. And whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live there or die, we are the Lord. For to this end Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be Lord both of the dead and the living. For me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor. Yet, what shall I choose? I wot not. For I am in a strait betwixt two, having a desire to depart and to be with Christ, which is far better. For he knoweth our frame, he remembereth that we are dust. As for man, his days are as grass, as a flower of the field. So he flourisheth. For the wind passeth over it, and it, and it is gone. 
and the place thereof shall know it no more. But the mercy of the Lord. Is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that bear him and his righteousness unto children's children.
Let us pray. Father, we thank you. Your word declared that in everything we should give you thanks. So this is a day of thanksgiving. We thank you, Lord, for the time you have given David to us. We thank you that it was you, Lord, who caused him to do all the good works that he did in this life. It was you, O oh God, that has caused the chief to touch many lives. And we are grateful that you, God, is the God who comforts. Father, give solace to his wife, Kathleen, his children, his grandchildren, his siblings, all of his close friends and his relatives. Father, we thank you for your son, Jesus, who came to earth, died, rose again, that we will have eternal life. We thank you for the blessed assurance that David's absent from the body and is now with you. We rejoice knowing that we will see him again. We thank you that he is experiencing no pain and no sorrow. So Lord, even now, so Lord, even now, we now commit the body to the earth from whence it came. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust.
comfort to all those who mourn. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In Jesus' name. Good night. Let's pray. Thank you.